Welcome to this WSO2 screencast. I am Sajit Aryatna, software engineer at WSO2. In this screencast, I am going to give you a brief introduction on error handling in WSO2 Enterprise Service Bus. Why we need to do error handling in ESB? The main role of an ESB is to act as the backbone of an organization's service-oriented architecture. An ESB has to deal with many data types, messaging standards, wireless protocols, and remote APIs. This means many things can go wrong between mediations. For instance, applications can crash, network connections can drop, services might be unavailable. These error conditions are very likely to cause an error or trigger a runtime exception in the ESB which might lead to message sending failures. Therefore, endpoint error handling is a major aspect of a successful ESB deployment. How do you do error handling in WSO2 ESB? WSO2 ESB provides four sequences for dealing with errors. A fault sequence is a collection of mediators just like any other sequence and it can be associated with another sequence or a proxy service. When the sequence or the proxy service encounters an error during mediation, then the mediation process is delegated to the specified fault sequence. In the fault sequence, it is possible to log the erroneous message by using the available mediators or forward it to a special error tracking service or send a SOAP forward back to the client indicating the error or even send an email notification to the system admin. It is not mandatory to associate every sequence or every proxy service with a fault sequence. In situations where a fault sequence is not specified, the default fault sequence will be used to handle errors. This is an XML configuration of a sample fault sequence named my fault sequence. As you can see, this fault sequence is very much like a regular sequence. In this sequence, we just do a log with a simple text, which is some error occurred. Whenever an error occurs in the mediation process in WSO2 ESP, the mediation engine provides the available information on the error by initializing error code, error message, error detail and error exception properties on the erroneous message. As the name suggests, the error code property gives the error code of the occurred error. You can refer to WSO2 ESB error handling documentation for available error codes and their meaning. Error message property gives the error message and error detail property gives additional details about the error and error exception property is set if the error is caused by an exception. You can access these property values using the getPropertyXPath function. Now let's move on to the first demonstration. In this demo, I am going to show a simple fault sequence that logs the error details of the occurred error. Here I am going to use the simple stock code service which is a sample access to service bundled with the WSO2 ESB distribution. In order to create a timeout, I have modified the simple stock code service by adding a 12 seconds delay to all of its operations. With this modification, we are going to configure a proxy in WSO2 ESB which only waits 5 seconds for a reply, thus creating a timeout error. First of all, we need to add a small configuration for Synapse Timeout Handler. We are going to set the Synapse Timeout Handler interval to 1 second. To set it, I am going to open synapse.property files which is in repository slash conf directory. And I'm going to add this key with value 
thousand which is thousand milliseconds or one second and I'm going to save it okay now this ESV pack is ready for this demonstration so let's add the proxy I have already created the proxy configuration let's open it You can see in this proxy service the proxy name is demo1 and I have configured an endpoint. The endpoint is our simple stock code service and I have configured a timeout for this endpoint. The timeout duration is 5000 milliseconds or 5 seconds and the response of this timeout is to call the fault sequence and this is the configured fault sequence for this proxy in this fault sequence we have a log and in this log we are logging the error code error message error detail and error exception properties and after that we are dropping the soap message okay now let's run this proxy configuration for that I'm going to start the WSO2 ESB server meanwhile I'm going to switch to SOAP UI which is my uh, SOAP client for this demo in in the SOAP UI, I am going to create a new SOAP project. Here you need to enter the WSDL URL of the proxy service. To get the WSDL URL of the demo1 proxy service, I am going to log into the management console of WSO2 ESB. This is the URL of the management console of the WS2 ESB. I'm going to open it. By clicking on the services list submenu, you can view all available services this is the demo1 proxy service by clicking on this url you can view the wsdl of the demo1 proxy service i'm going to copy this url and switch back to soap ui and paste it here then click ok okay now we have created the demo1 soap project i'm going to call the get quote operation on this service as the symbol value of this soap message i'm going to type wso2 and send it now let's switch to the console of the WS2 ESB server. Here you can see the log we put in in the proxy configuration. The error code is 10504 and the error message is send timeout. There is no error details and there is no exception. So this is the output of the log configuration we configured in the proxy uh, service as the fault sequence now let's switch back to the soap ui 
you can see the soap ui client is still hands on and waiting for a reply but there's no reply because we dropped the message in the fault sequence i'm going to about this request the problem in this proxy configuration is that uh, the client hangs waiting for a response when a timeout error occurs so let's move on to the next demonstration of this screencast we are going a step further in this demo instead of just logging the error details now we are going to send a proper error message a soap fault to the client I have already added the configuration for demonstration 2. I'm going to open it. This is the proxy configuration for demonstration 2. The name of this proxy is demo2. This is uh, very similar to the previous proxy configuration the same endpoint but in the fault sequence we are using the make fault mediator or the fault mediator in in that fault mediator i'm going to set the error code as the reason value and this te text as the detail value and using the response mediator i'm going to create a response from this fault say, mediator output and send it to the client okay now let's switch back to soap ui let's create a new soap project for demonstration 2 you need to add the proxy configuration wsdl url here to get that let's switch to the management console this is the demo 2 proxy configuration i'm going to click on this url and this is the WSDL of demo 2 proxy service. I'm going to copy this URL and switch back to SOAP UI and paste it here and then click OK. Now we have added the demo 2 proxy service. I'm going to call the get quote operation here as the symbol. I'm going to add WSO2 and send this so message okay we got a response this is the response this is a so fault and uh, the fault string is the error code and the detail property is the text we configured in the proxy configuration so in this demonstration we got a soap fault as a error message back to the client we used the fault mediator or make fault mediator to create the fault soap fault message so that's the end of this screencast on error handling in WSO2ESB. I hope this was useful and thank you for watching.